Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. I've been getting a bunch of comments saying, please review your 205 DS. I've heard really good things about it, but I want to make sure that it's a good welder. If you guys go look in my comment section and all my welding videos, at least one or two or three people are talking about the Yes Welder 205. And now I'm going to go ahead and give my honest opinions on how this thing has performed in the last, what, six months that I've owned it. So this is primarily a MIG welder. When I originally got the welder, mine came with a gas line, a regulator, and it also came with the wand for stick welding. So you can weld with gas, without gas, and you can stick weld with this machine. Because of the nature of my channel, I primarily use it for flux core welding because that is the most common type of weld that us hobbyists tend to use and my audience is primarily flux core welding so that's what i was focusing on these two parts right here they're basically brand new i have never used them so i'm basing this off of flux core welding only the wire that i have inside right now is a uh, lincoln wire 030 flux core inner shield wire and when i originally got the welder i did have to turn this around and i believe it also came with the separate roller in case you wanted to run 025 wire as for me i'm just running 030 inner shield which is a different type of roller and it did come with the, everything to switch that over so everything on this side's right here what i like is that it has this little dial so you can see how much pressure you want to put on the roller in case you mess with it you can take a picture or whatever you need if you don't like the way you end up setting it up, you could always bring it back to the way you had it. That's really nice to see. Moving on to the back of the welder, you guys can see that we've got on and off. This machine is a three wire machine, but you can plug this into 110 or 220 volt circuits. If you plug it into the 220, you can bring out a lot of potential from this machine. Most of my audience runs on a 110, so that's how I use it. But you can see right here, it's got the different duty cycles, different amperage that you can use. It looks like you can use the maximum of 205 amps only on the 220 volt. And on the 110 volt, you can use a maximum of 160 amp. So on 110, this would be a 160 amp machine. Under the on and off switch, you also have the fitting for the gas line, and then you have the little fan to cool down the inside of the board. So overall, the look of the machine is actually really sharp. I like the color. I believe this was a brand new color when I received the machine. I believe the older machines were like a sky blue, and this is more like a, like a mint. Moving on to the front, the cover for the control panel flips up. In the last six months, I haven't broken it. It's not brittle. It's still in good shape. So you know they're at least using decent materials when they're putting this stuff together. The front cover is all dirty, but it's all still together. And the display still works perfectly fine. Right here on the bottom, you have the positive and the negative. For these leads, if you wanted to run this machine electric positive, you would move this that belongs to the MIG gun and move it to the positive, and then you would move the ground side and move that to the negative, and you're done. If you want to move this to electric negative, then you go ahead and take the MIG wire, put it in the negative, and then the ground wire, you put it into the positive, and now you're set up for flux core. You don't have to mess with any wing nuts. It's all right here in the front. You don't have to open the machine. Up here in the front, it looks super complicated because there's a lot of buttons, but it's actually real simple. All right, let's go ahead and turn this machine on so you guys can check it out. And there we go. So it remembers the last setting you were welding with. So I was welding at 108 at 16.9. So when you push this, it'll actually move that blinking light. And depending on where you decide to move it, you can change the individual settings. So if you go A, you're only messing with the amperage. So that would be wire speed. So because it's on A, you can dot move the dial and you can move amperage up and down or AKA wire speed up and down. One cool feature is that if you go high enough, the voltage will actually start to change for you to compensate. I don't like to use that feature because I don't feel that it moves far enough. So for the most part, I tend to move things on my own. So if you wanted to move wire speed, that was amperage. If you wanted to go by a thickness of material, if you wanted to do a preset based on material thickness, you can go 1.6 millimeters, or you can go 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2.0. So as you increase the thickness of the material, the voltage also tends to go up. Like I said, I don't tend to use that function. I mainly go straight for the voltage. So if you click it one more time, it'll go into settings 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
and that basically acts like a dial you can go negative as well so depending on where you're at it'll go up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten steps of where you're at so if you just max it out at 10 wait for it to come in and now you're at 21 volts if you go ahead and go back and you move this down to negative 10 and just wait it brings you down to 13 volts so if you wanted to set your wire speed you can go amps you can go 108 like I was before figure out where you're at you're at 12.5 and we want to get back up to 16 so I'm gonna move it to 0 to see where we're at and now we're at 16.5 if I wanted to go a little bit more then let's go up one more number we'll go up to 1 and now we're at 16.9 there's also a 2T and a 4T. That has nothing to do with the flux core, so we're not gonna worry about that. The bottom button on the left-hand side, that's where you select your mode. So if you're going to go MIG, you can go CO2 100%, you can go 2575, you can switch it over to a stick function, you can go to the TIG function that this thing actually has, but it doesn't come with all the TIG uh, equipment. Then you can move it over to gasless if you want to, and then you can go ahead and select the size of wire that you're gonna be using. If you go to the next button on the right hand side, this allows you to select wire size, but for gasless, it doesn't actually allow you to move it. If you push the gas function, you can purge the gas with that, and if you use this little like figure eight button, this will actually uh, force the wire out. So if you're trying to clean out your gun or whatever, you can push that button. You if you're installing a new roll and you have to run wire through the gun, you can just push that button and, and away we go. One thing that I did like about this machine quite a bit was the gun. It's much more comfortable to use than the one on my Omni Pro. And they also took the time to actually put a little bit of branding on this. And if you guys look at the sheath, it also has branding for Yes Welder. So they actually took the time to design a comfortable gun um, and I've had no problems welding with it. It's actually super easy to use. The feedback on the button is super solid, much better than the one on my Omni Pro. Overall, this machine has been really nice. It's super light. It's easy to manage. I have no problems with it. If you guys are looking to buy one of these, there's a lot of people recommending these online. There's a lot of people in the comment section. So I absolutely love this machine. I have no problems with it. If anybody watching this has experience with this machine, put it in the comments below. Tell people what you think about this machine. I could be wrong. It could be a terrible machine, but I want to hear what you guys think. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.